All right. Hi there, everybody. My name is Cliff London, and I'm the campus visit coordinator at New College. I'm also an alum of New College and graduated now four years ago, back in May of 2016. Uh, I am joined today by four student panelists, and I'll let them introduce themselves in just one moment. Um, but in the meantime, I just wanted to let give everybody a kind of brief overview on how the uh, panel here will work tonight um, in an effort to kind of minimize the voices talking over one another. Um, please direct most of your questions to the chat. Um, and then I will kind of serve as moderator, asking questions uh, to the students if the students see one in the chat. Um, we'll kind of like hop back and forth between answering questions in the chat and answering it on the audio here. Uh, so now without further ado, I will turn it on over to the ambassadors. And I guess we'll start with uh, Ben. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, so my name's Ben. I am a third year student at New College. So um, I'm currently studying psychology, um, primarily social psychology, and I'm actually applying um, for graduate school this upcoming year. And I am also minoring in art history. Um, so I'm involved in the LGBTQ club on campus and also the New College of Florida Psychology Club. So hit me up with any psych questions. Caroline, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Caroline. I'm a second year. I am an out-of-state student. I'm currently in Massachusetts, hence the hat and jacket. I'm very jealous. Everyone looks really warm. Um, and I am still cold in April, but I am a marine bio um, student and studying public policy as well. Um, it's kind of it for me. I'm into the diving club. I can talk a lot about it that. I've gotten some emails. I'm very excited to talk about it, so. Good, good. Alex, yeah. you're next up on my screen. All right, <laughs> cool. My name is Alex. I'm a third year here at New College. I'm studying English, and we have a new minor, which is writing and rhetoric, and that's going to be my minor. It's not online yet, but I can talk about that if anyone does have questions. I'm also the Counseling and Wellness Center representative on campus, and I work in the Writing Center. I'm also in Orlando right now. <laughs> awesome. And Sarah? Uh, hey, I'm Sarah. I use she, her pronouns. I'm also kind of in the Orlando area, so we're not like super far away, me and Alex. Um, I am a second year religion AOC with a focus in Judaic studies. And I'm also a resident advisor on campus. I, well, when we were on campus, because you, as you'll probably know, all the Florida universities have moved to remote learning. Um, so we're not alone in that. But um, when we were on campus, I was in the uh, primarily first year dorm, which is called Third Court. So if you have any questions about housing or the, you know, what it's like being a first year, I feel like I could answer any of those questions as well. Awesome. So thank you all for introducing yourselves there. Um, I don't see any questions just yet in the chat, so I'll go ahead and ask the first one here. Um, can you talk a little bit about your transition into new college, like what your first semester was like, um, working with your academic advisor, maybe a little bit about that? I can start. Um, I... Oh, first, the first semester of your first year at any college is bound to be packed full of like all these like new experiences. Um, and I feel like so much happens in the span of just a few months. Um, but one of the things that I do like about new college, uh, especially, um, is that you really do have the freedom to you know, start with any class that you want to take your first semester there. Um, we certainly do have um, you know, required classes for your AOCs, for the liberal arts curriculum, um, but you don't necessarily have to start out in uh, your, the first semester of your first year by just taking a series of gen ed courses. You can really take whatever course you're interested in, and so um, I spent my first semester taking all these classes that, you know, I didn't know 
of what they were going to be like and never taking classes like that before. And um, that was actually how I decided what I wanted to major in. So you never know what's going to happen, but I really like the academic freedom that we have. Awesome. Um, something that I wanted to touch on, I just hearing Sarah talk, I, um, I met Sarah in the first week. We're in the same grade. So I met her, I feel like in like the first three days of school. And that's also where I met, I don't know, I feel like pretty much like definitely met new people, but like my core group of friends. And I think, you know, New College is a smaller school, but one of the huge benefits to that is just how quickly New College becomes home. Um, between, you know, the people in the dorm around you, like your people in your classes, um, staff, faculty, I, within a couple months, everybody knew that I was like the Massachusetts kid. I don't know, maybe I repped it too hard. I got like too aggressive about telling people, but um, every morning when I buy breakfast, Laura in the cafeteria will like tell me um, all about the, the Boston like games that I missed with the Red Sox and the Celtics and like talk to me about what I thought about it. Um, and I just think that's so sweet and is something that came on pretty, pretty quickly and has only like become more of a, I don't know, a home for me at New College. Awesome. Uh, so I do just want to say real quickly, I saw a question about, is there any place to meet upcoming New College students, like a social media page or something similar to that? Uh, communications and marketing is actually working on getting that out as soon as possible, kind of working with us and um, orientation and um, yeah, the kind of the three offices that are involved there. Um, so just keep a lookout um, in your inbox there, your email inbox. Um, but also in the meantime, feel free to email admissions at ncf.edu. So as soon as I have that information, I can send it your way rather than waiting for the um, email that will go out to everybody there. Um, I do also see another question. There's one here uh, for Ben specifically about are there any criminal psych classes and what are your experiences with more biocentric psych? And then there's a follow-up question for Caroline after that as well. Yeah, okay, so I was literally just about to respond to that in the chat, but like I can go ahead and respond to it here. Um, so we, just to answer your question, we don't offer directly any criminal psych courses. However, um, we do have a ver various um, psychology faculty at New College. Um, so there's about, there's six, um, between six and seven of them, um, if you count the psych tech. Um, that actually helps out with classes. But um, if you actually go to um, one of these folks, and you say, hey, I'm really interested in doing something on the criminal, criminal psych end, um, you know, you may be able to get that sponsored as like a class, like an offsite class, which we call tutorials at New College. So that's really cool. Also, if you want, um, I know that you can dual enroll um, at New College and take one other course per semester at a different institution outside of New College. So um, right, across, right down the street, we have University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee. Um, so they have stuff on criminal justice, which is good. Um, I took an intro clinical psych class there and that was great. Um, so you do have these options. It's just, we don't offer it directly in the department. We do have like cognitive, developmental, bio psych, you know, social. Um, as far as the biocentric classes go, um, I've taken behavioral endocrinology, biological psychology um, as like my main two. And then there's this other advanced seminar course that I'm really excited to take next year. And it's like the biopsychology of sex, gender, and sexual behavior. And those are really thorough because they get into like the basics of like cognitive neuroscience. They get into all the biological mechanisms and the cognitive mechanisms that you use. Um, and, and it just really depends on the course, but, um, like for, for, um, behavioral endocrinology, we talked about how hormones impact behavior, right? So for an entire semester, we looked at like the menstrual cycle, we looked at other forms of hormones and how they affect behavior. So it just really depends on what you're looking at. Um, and then to touch on the second part of that question with the public policy, um, I think the workload certainly, when I think of workload and the classes that you have to take for it, it certainly depends on um, if you're looking to major in public pro policy, I'm kind of looking to minor in it. Um, it does align pretty well with 
there's a lot of econ classes, a lot of um, your normal like poli sci classes. As a marine biology student, there is not a whole lot of overlap um, between classes that I need to take, like, I don't know, calc and physics and my bio classes, and then the public policy. So I think in that, the workload can be a little bit more just because you need to be aware of like, oh, so I need to get to this higher level class by the time I graduate in these two fields and just kind of be able to balance that. Um, but I also have found that I just really like how it, um, I don't know, it splits up my day. I think sometimes it can be marine bio, especially is a very like structured AOC. I think when you look at AOCs in new college, there is definitely a lot of variety between um, having some where there are still options and there's still a lot of space to branch out and kind of follow your interests and passions. But at the same time, you know, there's a pathway. You take this your first year, your second year, you kind of need to keep moving up the ladder. Um, but it's been really, really nice to have classes where, I don't know, you, you break up the science. I get to break up the science with a little bit of writing. I get to break up the writing with a little bit of science. And it just really kind of has that, you know, feeling that I'm getting that good base. I'm getting that good liberal arts, I don't know, education that I was looking for. But um, public policy is really interesting. I look, I really recommend looking into it if you're interested. Um, even in minoring, their faculty has been so, so great with me. Honestly, I've never met, I like, I hadn't really met any of them, but I just shot them an email and was like, hey, listen, can I have some help? I don't have a lot of, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to fit this all in. And they've been more than accommodating. It's been really great, so. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for answering that. Um, and so we have a question of, is it required to take a language at New College? And if y'all can't answer that, I can probably jump in for that. I sent a message in response and I said like not for every AOC, but like there are a few that like do require, like literature requires. Mm -hmm. If you take like Chinese, of course you'd have to do it, but for the most part, like the answer is no. Yep. But you can also check that out online and your advisor would also help you like go through that and find maybe a language that you want to learn. If It really depends. Like my advisor kind of pushed me to take a language. It wasn't part of like my requirement, but I would say like a lot of like English professors specifically will try to push you to take a second language. But we do have really good language programs on campus. For sure, for sure. All right, so I don't see any more questions just yet, but what is your favorite class that you've taken at New College? Mm. Tutorial. <laughs> I made a children's literature tutorial because we don't offer it. We don't offer it as like a literature course. So essentially I just like went to a professor, I asked her, would she be interested? I made a reading list. It was nice because it was really flexible. Like some of the books we didn't determine until like we had talked and had a conversation about it. So some books were like new things, some books were old things, but it was really cool to apply like an analytical view to a lot of children's books that I had read as a kid, especially like The Secret Garden. You could read it as like a Victorian, like a Gothic. You can read it as post-colonial. There's quite a bit of stuff in there. And a lot of things like, I guess you didn't think critically of as a child, but I don't know, it's really cool like to be able to do something like that. It's something I couldn't really do at another university. If they didn't have the course, I couldn't take it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of to jump off what Alex was saying. So from a psych perspective, again, I've taken like a variety of courses, um, but I would say probably my favorite academic class in new college was probably, um, the psychology of good and evil. Um, so that was actually sponsored through my professor, um, who's actually also my academic advisor. Her name's Kathy Cottrell. She is awesome, amazing. Um, I honestly don't know if I would have gotten this far without her, um, just because she's always helped me and motivated me. But taking courses with your academic advisors, there's like something special about it because it's like you're in sync with them, you're, you're, you're their advisee. But um, throughout the course, it was really cool. We talked, we started with the bad. Right. So the evil and then we moved to the good. So we talked about everything from, um, you know, stigma and prejudice to terrorism to um, acts of violence. 
right? Um, all kinds of stuff. And then we started moving over to the good probably during, I would say after the, the fourth week um, in the class. So this was a half semester course. Um, so she split, so which is called a module at New College. And then, so after moving to the bad, we moved to like heroism, courage, happiness, on these different things. Um, but, and we looked at all of this different literature from a social psychological perspective. So that's the one thing that the new college faculty really love to um, show you is to actually take things that you um, have read and things that you have learned and actually shape it and, and think for yourselves and apply it to your own life. Um, so it's, that was a really cool course that I took. Um, so I do see we've got some more questions in as well. Um, there's one about the animal psychology have as many hands on projects as marine biology. And I'm not sure if any of y'all would be able to answer that as well, but I can kind of jump in here. I know you can take it. I know the goldfish. All I know is the goldfish and I love them with my whole heart is an animal psych class right now. Yeah. So, um, in terms of animal psychology and biopsych, um, there is a lot of overlap between the two like subject areas essentially, like marine biology, like there is, there's definitely a lot of hands-on projects with that, um, like students can intern or work over at Marine Aquarium. Uh, we have a boat that students can take out onto, not that students can themselves can take out, but they'll go out for like research trips and things like that onto Sarasota Bay using the school's uh, research vessel. Um, and the animal psych program, um, if you're more on the marine aspects, uh, or like the marine side of things, um, uh, if you're more on the uh, marine side of things, it'll be very similar to marine biology. But if you're uh, studying like land mammals, um, it might be honestly something, honestly most of our psychologists I believe are a little bit more overlapping with marine biology there. I'm actually kind of blanking out on like land, land animal psych stuff there. Um, we do also have a question here of, are any of you in query? And if so, what kind of activities does the club host? Yeah, I can, I can totally take that. So, and I see that's by someone um, named Tyler. So um, yes, we, I am active in query. So um, I would say that I'm a little less active now than I was like my first and second year, but still, I still love to go to the meetings and stuff. Um, at times we'll do different, um, we'll do different activities. So a big thing that Query has done in the past is coming out monologues, right? So we actually form an event somewhere on campus um, where um, we kind of set up a mic, we have like a little bit of a stage um, and we try and make it as comfortable as possible, but we invite everyone from the new college community to come in and to talk about their coming out story or just like the process of coming out. That's really cool. We also do an LGBTQ ball, um, which is kind of like another wall type of party. Um, that's that's basically queer themed, which I think is really really cool. Um, sometimes we'll do uh, obviously we'll do general meetings, right? Check ins and stuff. We might do a button event where you actually get to make pronoun buttons. There's honestly, it's I've seen a, a very many events happen over the last like two years. Um, and also, what's really great is as a member, as a first year, if you have like a certain idea or if you have something that you think would be really cool that we could do, that's like feasible, like as a club event. Um, we're definitely also open to hearing the, that commentary as well. Didn't Query did the, do the zine fest? Wasn't that Query yeah. and somebody else? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. So yeah. another example of one of, um, I'm not actually in the club, but I like going to lots of events. Um, one example of like a bigger event they did this year was um, something they called Zine Fest. And so we had a lot of students who made their own like zines and um, art and everything that were had tables and were selling and then we also had some really great like writers and authors from the area come in um, and bring some of their work we had raffles there was a bus there was like a poem bus that mm. drove from Tampa which was really really fun so yeah they are really active I love them y'all do a lot yeah 
Oh, you know what? There's one thing that I completely forgot to mention, and this goes back to what Cliff was saying earlier. Sorry to like cut in, but um, if any of you guys are interested, we're holding um, a first year seminar on intro psychology, um, animal cognition. Um, and I'm actually going to be um, the uh, peer leader um, for that. So I'll be actually be working with Dr. Heidi Carley, um, who's one of the professors in the psych department. So that's kind of, that was getting at where we do, we're going to do like different field trips and stuff. and, and um, that's kind of like where we take psychology out of the classroom and, and look at it at an animal perspective. So sorry, I didn't mean to go off topic, but I also think it's important to like, just let you guys know. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Uh, so we do have a question here of what is the average amount of work you get in a week? I feel like that varies across majors for sure. I do English and like lit, so it's usually mainly like, we might have two weeks to read a book, so you read like half of it, kind of just like divide the pages. We don't really have like, I would say assignments during like outside of midterm and finals. I mean, we have them, but they're not anything like crazy. If we do, it's like you can pick the date. It's maybe a short writing assignment within that field, and it's usually something you can pick the date on, so it's flexible. It's pretty nice because if you have work in other classes, you can always change your date within like that AOC. I don't know. That's just how like English professors are. They tend to like have flexible dates, assignments, or just like mini essays that build up for your final. So I wouldn't say it's too much. It generally like is something I can do like later at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, um, my experience, not sci wise, it's a lot more like weekly as opposed to mostly generally classes will either meet three times a week or twice um, and then the length kind of shifts. Um, I feel like it's mostly weekly so like every Friday night Saturday night I would have um, my family's joining um, <laughs> would have like I don't know. If you did it all in one go, probably like three hours of work, but spread it over the week. It's not really that bad um, of like calc or chem or um, even some econ classes that I've taken. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming from like, uh, from, from like social sciences, I mean, I don't think, I would agree with Caroline and um, Alex. I think like some weeks may be a little bit more hefty than others, depending on the reading, right? Um, I think that like the big difference between going from high school to um, to undergrad is that, you know, the reading, it might be the same amount, but it might just be a little bit more nuanced, right? So a lot of the times it's to really facilitate that discussion and go a little bit further than just like a general textbook. Um, so you might have a few articles depending on the class you might read, um, a lot of application-based stuff, which is really nice. So, and again, what's really cool is, is that like, even though you will have like midterms and finals, um, that's always, you're never going to get out of that no matter where you go. Um, a lot of the times you can pick like a certain topic that you're really interested in a course and tailor it to the, the midterm or final, right? So the professor's not going to come at you and say, okay, Caroline, um, I want you to write a very big paper on chewing gum, right? They're, you know, she's basically going to say, all right, if I'm, if you're taking like, I know, I don't know, we offer really cool skates, sharks and rays class, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so like you can write like what like a midterm paper or something on on anything in that I've been taking it um I know I mean similarly like for my I'm in microbiology right now and same kind of thing so my big big projects are um a couple joint like presentations slash papers but yeah I got to choose what it was so I'm doing a type of phytoplankton because it lights up and it's fun and that's kind of my jazz and then some other people were doing like E. coli in bugs um so yeah trying to take that I don't know wherever your interest lies I feel like for me the big adjustment um from high school to college work-wise is just not having the amount of busy work that I was used to like I feel like in high school there was a lot more of let me give you this little assignment to make sure that you're doing the reading like oh did you do it are you sure like let's do some fill in the blank this is so fun and um that definitely that starts fading which is not necessarily a bad thing you just it's kind of on you to make sure that you're 
you're caught up and you're getting your kind of day to day, week to week done. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's, I mean, it's hard. I think the transition anywhere is probably going to be hard, but you know, you figure it out. Big bump to what Alex said in the chat. Um, I have, I completely agree. Um, and I don't know, I don't have a lot to reference when it comes to other colleges, but I think um, my experience, my experiences with professors have been really amazing here. I feel like um, having smaller class sizes really allows you to form closer relationships with professors, being in smaller classes. Um, that often have, you know, attendance requirements, um, your professors will know you and they'll know when you're not in class. And if you're not in class or something, they're more likely to reach out and ask if you're okay than to be like, why aren't you in class? Like, they're not gonna hunt you down and, you know, threaten you with not passing. They really do care about your success. Um, and I think New College, is also pretty writing intensive. I'd also agree with that. It does depend on your major um, in regards to like how that'll look. Um, but, you know, I think there's definitely a really big writing component to any area of concentration you're pursuing. Um, for people focused in the humanities, you know, you might not have many uh, tests at all, but you'll probably be doing a lot of writing. Um, my, uh, last fall semester, that was the fall 2019 semester, I did not have a lot of tests or exams, but I wrote so many papers. Like, I was constantly writing papers. So, the work will, um, will look a little different depending on what you're focusing on, but, yeah, bump to all of the things that you said. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Um, there was another question here. Oh, gosh, I lost in the chat of uh, would it be difficult to have a merged or like a merged AOC or a slash the first year or, it, or uh, can it be done in a manageable way? Uh, I mean, Coming from my like own personal experience, right? I mean, I'm I'm kind of dabbling more in the social sciences, but I also have my my art history slash. So I have taken enough coursework um and and classes in the humanities, right? So these are different like styles of writing. These are like completely just different worlds, even though they can overlap. Um, but I remember my first my first semester, I walked in and I knew right from I'm I was one of those. Those, I wouldn't say weird kids, but I was one of the rarities where I actually walked into college like knowing what I wanted to study and I really didn't deviate from that. Like, I don't know, like when I took, I mean, I assume a lot of you guys probably, I hope, I hope some of you guys have taken AP Psych, but I remember being in like under, like right before undergrad, I was like, wait, what am I going to do, you know? And uh, I finally came across psychology and like that discipline and it just always interested me, right? Um, but I also was interested in art history as well. So um, I took an AP art history class my, my senior year too. Um, so going into new college, what's nice is, is that we, they make it very clear that your first year is really just exploring, taking what you're really interested in. So like for me, I walked in and I took my first intro psych class. I took a few art history courses, maybe like a sociology class. Um, and I've kind of just built on it, you know, um, and, but the nice thing too is, is even if you decide to switch, right, like, like, you know, after your first year, or you realize you, you're taking a different path, that's okay too. And the professors also have been really helpful with guiding you on that and helping you get those requirements still in time. So it really depends on your situation and like what you're interested in, but it is definitely doable, whether it's in your first semester or your like third or fourth semester. I feel like in my experience, the biggest thing in terms of um, pursuing a major and a minor or even a double major has just been awareness. So it sounds like you know that that's something that you're interested in. That's something that like you maybe want to pursue. I think that's really good. I mean, again, I my major and minor don't match up a lot in terms of classes. I think sometimes people are really lucky in that, um, you know, your foundational classes, maybe your, your intro this, your intro that kind of match up for both of them. And you can kind of check two boxes at once. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing is just like being aware. I totally don't think it's... I completely think it's doable. Um, 
but making sure you know it and you kind of have your mind on like what the end goal is. I have a really big, uh, not really big, but I have an Excel sheet that has like, here are the classes that I need to take for my major. Here are the classes I need to take for my minor. Um, like this is when they're offered. This is what I am interested in. This is kind of how maybe this could work out. Um, so yeah, I just think having that in mind can be really, really valuable, but super doable. Kind of wish that I started earlier. I kind of had an idea for a um, specifically public health and then changed my mind my second year. So I don't know, you can definitely move around. There's time, there's flexibility. Yeah, I would say that, you know, New College is a really great place to go if you don't know exactly what you want to study. Um, because, you know, like, like Ben was kind of saying, um, there is a lot of flexibility, um, freedom going into your first semester, working with your academic advisors will help you so much in planning out, you know, how many semesters you have left to get done what you need to get done. But if you already have an idea of what you want to do, um, I would not be concerned because, you know, I, I have friends myself who um you know starting their third year um decided to pick up an entirely new area of concentration um you know maybe switch from you know biology to international area studies which are both very involved majors or areas of concentration and you know with proper planning and everything that is doable and as long as you're like working with your academic advisor they'll they'll help you get where you need to go for sure Ooh, okay so i'm trying to come up with some more questions here Sarah, can you maybe talk a little bit about your role as an RA on campus? Yeah, totally. So assuming I would be on campus right now, mm -hmm. um, I would be living in the same residence hall um, as all of my residents. So each dorm, um, and some of you might be familiar with those if you've you know visited campus before, um, is going to have at least one RA nearby. Um, in the pay dorms, which is where I have been this past year, um, there are either two or three RAs because there tend to be a lot of residents in those halls. Um, but basically RAs are kind of there 24 seven as a resource, especially your first year if you have questions about the school, how, you know, different offices, like maybe, I don't know, the Writing Resource Center works. Um, you know, older students like RAs or even orientation leaders, peer leaders have a lot of experience with that kind of thing. So those are, uh, you know, good people to go to and ask those kinds of questions. Um, I, you know, have to be on duty every so often. So I'll make my rounds of campus. Um, and when RAs are on duty, they always have the duty phone, which you will receive the phone number for as soon as you get to campus. So if you um, ever get locked out of your dorm, that's a really common thing that, you know, RAs are there to help with. Um, they also deal with roommate mediations, which, you know, hopefully you won't ever have to deal with. Um, but, you know, if that ever comes up, you can always go to an RA about that. Um, in an emergency situation, you always call the RA duty phone number first. Um, and of course, you know, there's really frequent programming, whether it's not in your hall, uh, whether it's in your hall or some other hall, there's always going to be an RA program going on. So, you know, there's, there's stuff to do around campus, club meetings, RA events, big campus wide events put on by, by the SOS office. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. um, Dr. Feldman mentioned earlier that some of the RA events are going online. Are you familiar with some of those events this term? Yeah, so that's kind of been like catered to each individual dorm. So I'm not 100% sure what like every RA is doing. Um, but since we've been online, 
um, all of the RAs have moved to Canvas pages. Um, instead of using Canvas for like posting assignments and stuff, we just have links to more fun, laid back kind of things. Um, and we'll have like discussion boards there, which are, you know, just optional and, and they're for people to use. Um, every RA has been doing office hours, which are, you know, virtual. Um, so anybody's free to like join a Zoom office hour, um, play video games, go on, you know, social distancing walks um, while on Zoom on your phone, you know, just that kind of thing. Um, but it's it's a little bit different when you're working from home. Sure, thank you. And um, there's a question here of have any of you studied abroad? And I know the answer to that of none of you have just yet. Um, I know that Sarah is looking to study in Massachusetts this upcoming fall semester. Um, from an alum perspective though, I did study abroad while I was a student at New College. Uh, I went away the fall semester of my third year and I went over to Oxford, England for the term and studied at Trinity College of Oxford. Um, it was a really amazing experience and a uh, fun fact is that the name New College of Florida is derived from New College of Oxford, which is one of Oxford's like 42 or so different institutions there. And as part of the Oxford Study Abroad program, students can actually go to New College of Oxford. Um, so one of my New College friends who studied abroad with me, he actually was at New College that term. And then again, I was at Trinity College that term. So I at least got to see New College of Oxford, um, the like original New College there. Uh, but for myself personally, I loved my experience studying abroad. Um, it was, it was just, nice to have a different experience off campus and again i had somebody else that was on the same program as me from new college um but still we had a tendency to That's make our friends um but, and, uh, in several no, areas and whatnot sorry. of the city yeah, he's just talking um oh gosh what else Oh yeah, I actually am still good friends with my roommate from Oxford. Um, I actually just had a Zoom call with him on Tuesday now at this point, in two days. Um, so yeah, again, I actually, I love studying abroad. Um, you can spend up to three semesters off campus. Uh, there is the National Student Exchange where students are able to pay the same tuition to new college and then room and board to the school that's hosting them that term. Most of those schools are here within the United States. And Sarah, is that what you're using for um, your fall semester? Awesome. Um, there are also other programs where you'd sit down with the study abroad advisor and just let her know where you're interested in studying and she'd help you find programs you apply for and kind of go from there. Um, Sarah, would you be able to talk at all about the uh, NSE process, the National Student Exchange process? Yeah, for sure. So depending on which semester you're planning on um, actually studying off campus will depend on, you know, when all of your stuff is due. So for me, studying off campus um, the coming fall semester, I got um, all of my applications and stuff in um, at the beginning of February. So that involved talking with Lawrence Zansky, who is the off campus uh, and study abroad coordinator. I had to speak with my academic advisor and, um, you know, after making sure like everything was in order, knowing this was the best decision for me, um, we got everything together. Um, I found out that I was going to be able to study through the NSC at the beginning of, of March. Um, and just within the past week and a half or so um, I've been you know registering for courses and so kind of similar process to how it would work at um, to work at New College basically but I get to take classes with other professors in the field that I want to go into um, and honestly just take more varied courses than 
you know, we could possibly offer at New College um, just because, you know, small school, we offer a lot of really cool classes. But if you really want to focus in something, I think it's a really good option to go through the NSC, especially um, because the tuition is not so different than what you would be paying to go to New College. So if price is something you're concerned about, then um, I would definitely consider it. Mm -hmm. Um, I do just want to add on that for international and area studies students. Uh, generally, that is, it's a requirement for those areas to study abroad at least one semester. Um, let's see. I don't see any other questions, so let's try to... Do any of y'all just want to kind of talk... Do y'all have any questions you think might be good or do you think mm -hmm. might be helpful for the uh, students at the chat here? Ooh, why don't we do the, um, why did you pick new college question? I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> Hi, that works, that's perfect. Six. Caroline, you should yeah, go Why did you choose new college? Um, what's my spiel? It's been so long, quarantine is really <laughs> going down. Um, I would say when I was considering schools, there were like three big things on my mind. Um, one was definitely size. Um, one was the potential to do research as an undergrad, because I was lucky enough, I had some experience um, doing some like marine bio field work in high school and I just, you know, I would have done it, but it would have been really, really sad for me to um, have that experience and then go back into a classroom for four years. Um, I really, I was like, I know this is what I want to do. I know kind of how to do it. Like, let's go. I don't want to just sit in the classroom. Like, get me out there, get me on the water. Um, so that was huge. And then campus culture, of course, is like big. Um, I came from a pretty small, like hippy dippy, um, maybe not hippy dippy, but like alternative elementary school. I didn't get grades till I went to, um, my normal public high school. And right away, there was this big um, emphasis on grades that I like was not used to. Um, and every class I was in, I had a teacher my first day of freshman year tell me that I needed to start worrying about my GPA now, or I wouldn't get into college. And then like my whole life would just fall apart. Um, and it was just like not, um, I don't know, not an environment that I found um, terribly conducive to my own growth. And New College is an honors college. You know, we do have a lot of students that are incredibly driven, incredibly successful academically, but I was so, I wanna say shocked, cause like I believe in New College students to do it, but I was like so impressed when I showed up and I was like, no, like here's a group of kids who are, again, like so passionate, so like invested in what they're doing maybe they don't know what they want to do with their life but they know they're going to try um but not being weighed down by those traditional letter grades not feeling like that needed to be a huge part of your um your learning process because i think it should be about learning and about how you're growing and what you're doing and how you'll use that in the future as opposed to what is my gpa what's my ranking what does that look like for me um so that's huge also just love the kids, love the culture, but um, that and then research, you know, I know a lot of people at New College that got the opportunity to work with professors pretty much in their first year from the get-go. I don't want to jinx myself, but I found out today that I might be um, working with a professor of mine on a paper she's publishing. So like fingers crossed, I'll be mm -hmm. published, you know, in my third year, like by the time I turn 20, which would be really, really cool um, and something that a lot of people tend to have to wait a little bit longer to really get their hands on that kind of um, experience, but we're able to start early, which is really great. So, congrats, Caroline. Thanks, dude. It's on Coral. I'm so excited. I'm like so psyched. Yeah, I think like to jump off what Caroline like hinted at, um, that was a big thing that pulled me into new college, just like as a prospective student. I actually met. Dr. Cottrell, again, who's my academic advisor, like, probably, like, maybe, like, a few months before I decided, like, I wanted to commit, 
um and like you know I don't know just like meeting her and like understanding like this could be possibly like my mentor and someone that I could work with for like four years was like already really cool but we are like right off the bat started talking about like possible research opportunities we could do together um and of course like you know once I actually came to new college and I got to know like all the psych faculty um I I've been able to work very closely with them um as well um i've worked with both dr cottrell and there's another um, social psychologist we have at new college his name's dr stephen grant and um, i'm actually doing my senior thesis um, in collaboration with them both um, and i'm looking at lgbtq folks and openly affirming churches so like churches that deviate from like you know like mainstream christianity and kind of take more of an inclusive stance towards sexual and gender minorities um, but i've been able to go to conferences that have actually been funded um like through through um, new college and through um, different grants that you can apply for, uh, but I've been able to meet other academics and and everything. And not only that, but just like Caroline, um, Steve and I, we have been working on uh, a manuscript that we are actually submitting to an academic journal. So these are like really important things that you can do not only to build, um, I guess like a relationship and collaborate with these people, but also you you can like really like focus on getting you know, to the next step and continue your education. Um, these are all really important things. And also one other thing that I just like want to make very clear, if any of you guys are thinking about going into um, a major where you think you might want to continue your education after new college into grad school, new college is a really great place to come because again, you're going to get to know these people like, 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 like that. Like you guys are going to get very close, especially with your academic mentors. And one of the most important things that helps you get into grad school and make that next venture is actually letters of recommendation, right? So um, students that go to larger universities, right, they, they have other positive aspects and, and they might have more like lab space or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, some people really do struggle to get that support that they need, um, you know. So just as you guys are thinking about if you guys have already thought about, you know, deciding where you want to go, that's great, but also there, there's some really great benefits that we have with the faculty. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I decided to come to New College. Awesome. Alex, uh, do you want to share a little bit? Yeah. So for me, I toured New College when I was a first year, like a freshman in high school, and I really liked it then, but then like I was like set on new college in my junior year. I had like a little bit of like a meltdown. Like I haven't even looked at other schools. So then when I like thought about doing UF, like, you know, I'm from Florida, so like UF is like one of the bigger schools. I was really turned off by the fact that there's students, you know, paying tuition and you're sitting on the floor because you can't even get a seat in your class. I hated that. And I'm also interested in literature, and you can't really have a discussion-based class. So then I started looking towards really small schools like Rollins and Flagler, but the thing besides like the fact that like New College is such a great cost um, compared to other schools and like for the education you're getting, I sat in on a class at another university and well, kind of a few, but like especially this one specific, which I'm not going to name because I've got some new names here, but it didn't feel for me like engaging and Cliff actually arranged my visit and I ended up in a Greek class, which is not a literature class. Mm -hmm. And there's only five students in there. And everyone was really welcoming. At like the other schools, I was kind of ignored by the students, but in the classroom at New College, everybody was very engaged with me. And then they were also engaged with the professor. Everybody came there wanting to learn. And even though I didn't really understand half of what was going on in the class, somebody would like be like, hey, this is what's going on. And that was really nice to see how there was like a very nice caring community already. And I didn't even go there and people were being that way. So for me, that was a really nice aspect. And just the fact that like I got to see how small the classrooms were, the way that discussions worked, I knew that that's how I wanted to learn, especially because that's where like for me, I thrive. I'm not like a test-based person. I'm not someone who can just like listen to a lecture. Like I want to be able to voice my concerns and get to know like, faculty and students. So I think that's re really set new college apart for me from other schools. Awesome, thank you. And so um, I answered some questions about uh, work study jobs and working on campus in the chat, but I figured I would give a verbal kind of overview on that and then 
defer to the student ambassadors to talk a little bit about the jobs that they have on campus since um, it's literally all of you have done so <laughs> much. Um, <laughs> So uh, in terms of work study positions, you can determine your eligibility um, either through the FAFSA or just by calling the Office of Financial Aid, they'll be able to verify that for you. And uh, the work study positions, there are a couple um, scattered kind of across departments across campus there. Um, so they range from residential advisors, RA positions, to student ambassadors, like the four students to, uh, that you have here. Um, students have worked in the Office of Financial Aid, in the Registrar's Office, um, kind of really all over the place for uh, work-study positions. Um, the application process is the same as other jobs where you would submit a resume and then go throughout the interview process and all of that. Um, I also mentioned and Alex posted the link to the CEO, the Center for Career Engagement and Opportunity, and they are a fantastic resource for our students helping them find jobs, internships, whatever's kind of next for them. Um, and using this program called Handshake, which um, I've heard some high schools are even more familiar with now too. Uh, they're able to kind of pair you up based on like interest or you can just kind of like browse around and like apply um, you can kind of like a, like a quick resume and whatnot. Um, so now I'll turn it on over to the ambassadors to talk a little bit about what um, some of their various roles that they've had across campus for some examples of other jobs and whatnot. Um. I just, just to jump in, I just saw another question on our work study positions available to freshmen. And I want to say, yes. Um, I was hired at the office of the registrar my second semester of freshman year, just because that's when they uh, were hiring. So I got an email sent out to the entire students list saying, hi, this is what we're looking for. This is what your you know duties would be. Went in for an interview and actually got hired like on the spot, which was really cool. Um, and I've been working there ever since. So I would say, in my experience, a lot of departments are actually really excited to hire freshmen um, just because of the potential for you to stay all four years. Mm -hmm. um, I know the student, I got hired because their current student worker was graduating. Um, and then I know that they hired two freshmen this year as well. So they're really excited actually about like having you in there, training you, and then pretty much keeping you there as long as you want to be there. Um, yeah, I work. kind of did the same with Sarah. We had Sarah sent in, like lined up to start working as one of our student um, telephone tele counselors. So they like call prospective students. Uh, we had Sarah lined up for that before you even like stepped foot on campus, I think this year. So there are definitely sometimes we, we aren't doing that this year, unfortunately, um, but there are definitely um, those opportunities for first year students. Yeah, I also think um, just just to also jump in, it's although you um, students can be RAs or resident advisors, they can also work in the different departments. You can also um, actually get jobs working in the classroom with professors. And I think this is something that's really awesome and important. And um, although generally a lot of the time students are in their third or fourth years when they hold like a teaching um, assistantship or, or decide to become um, a p academic peer leader, right? These things are still really great for you to do and to get in the classroom. Um, I know for myself, um, again, because I kind of took um, certain psychology courses early, um, I've done a lot of work in the classroom with, um, with my professors, right? So last, this actually, this past fall, I served as um, a teaching assistant for Dr. Heidi Harley for cognitive psychology, which was really awesome. So I was doing like a bunch of different kinds of review sessions for exams. I was doing, I was actually helping grade a lot of the assignments. Um, doing demonstrations for for a class um, lecture, um, taking notes, just like just like being there for the students. Um, and then I also this semester I'm working as a teaching assistant for personality psychology, which is a similar intermediate, but but in a different area of psychology. Um, and then also introduction to statistics. 
Um, and then this upcoming, outside of just being like a student ambassador, um, I'm also, again, going to be the peer leader for um, Dr. Harley on this upcoming fall. So if any of you guys take her animal cognition class, that would be really cool because like I get to like hang out with you guys in the classroom and be able to talk about like the course material. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's really cool because you get to uh, just really get to know these people um, outside of just picking them. I will say the one thing that usually is required with those roles um, is basically that the student has actually taken the course and has done well in the course. Um, so I had to take like cognitive psych and, and stats and everything. Um, and then also what's really cool, and this is something that they just started rolling out, orientation leaders are now actually um, paid positions on campus. So although it's a short, uh, it's a short role, it's about a week or so, um, you get to, as an orientation leader, get to like welcome students like you and get to do a bunch of group stuff and activities and just like to, to really explore what new colleges offer. And actually I'll be um, one of the OLs, so if you, uh, if you get put in my group. I think that's such a great idea that they're like finally giving care leaders and like orientation leaders like better pay this year. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some classes, I just want to reiterate, um, you have to take certain classes to get certain jobs on campus. So I'm a student writing assistant and you have to have taken pedagogy and practice to be able to apply for that job. It does focus on writing, so it's within like the writing discipline and like I said earlier, we are getting our own minor, which is pretty cool because that's not something that was an option before. Mm -hmm. And a lot of students that like take writing classes tend to keep taking them because they enjoy them. They're very much focused on the discipline and not like deconstructing like things that you thought like were a good, good writing, a good writer. What does that even mean? Don't know. But the Writing Center is such a great place on campus. It's a really popular space. So many people just come in to hang out. It is just such a, like a good social space, but also a space like a great workplace. People do come in to do like even math assignments because we always have coffee brewing. We have writing events going on. So we do like a thesis crunch. So like when your thesis comes up in your fourth year, we have writing groups where we'll do like 45 minutes writing, 15 minutes socializing and snack time. <laughs> even if like taken our groups virtual. So now we have like this new group that's like Monday motivation and two of our squads are doing like workout sessions in between. <laughs> so like, it's pretty cool. I don't know. We like try to do programming that's relevant to the student body. My favorite orientation event that you guys can look forward to is Swaffle House. We make waffles and everybody shows up. There's always a long line and everyone's just like having a good time. It's a pretty fun event. I didn't go my first year. So when we worked it last year, it was pretty cool. And I was like, wow, I should have gone. But um, would there be a virtual writing center for next semester? Unless we're stuck like not coming back to campus, then yes, we would. But we also like offer virtual appointments all year round, although most of the time it's in person, it's more of like an accessibility thing. Like if there's a reason you can't, like if you're studying abroad, we will still have virtual appointments with you. That way it's still free. You don't have to pay. You don't have to go to the other school if you don't want to. You can use us as a service, especially because it's nice to see a familiar face. We have these things called reoccurring appointments, which are pretty good pretty great for thesis students especially. You could have the same SWA, have them the entire year reading your thesis and helping you improve. The Writing Center, we really stress like overall that it's a place where you can come at any stage of the writing process. And I literally mean like it's everything. Like we come in for brainstorming, like I use the Writing Center. Pretty much everyone uses it. It's, it's pretty great. And I think that what's nice is there isn't really a stigma that like when you think of a writing center or any type of peer tutoring, people often think of it as something that's like remedial, but that's not like how people on campus seem to think of peer tutoring. And that's something that we really strive for is the idea that you can get help and it doesn't have to be like, you're not a good writer because everyone's a pretty good writer. It's just learning how to like navigate conventions and sometimes talking out ideas. But that's one job on campus that I think is like a really great opportunity. You take the class, you do like an internship inside the writing center. And I really enjoy it because I, we do like little parties for like staff parties and that's always fun. We had like a really fun Christmas party and like everyone did like Secret Santa. <laughs> and 
and next year I'm going to be the writing center um, RA or the writing LLC RA. So. Nice. <laughs> All right. So I posted this in the chat below. Um, but that is all the time that we have for questions here. Um, I did list everybody's email. So if you have any additional follow up questions, I'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, I included my email, the general admission account email, and uh, then all of the student ambassadors emails. So thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight, everybody. And we hope to see you all soon. Um, just as a heads up, we do hope to host more of these sessions next week. Um, so as we solidify those, just please keep a lookout.